The war is over. The warrior who fought for American rights and liberties has lost. He's being led out of a high security van to the courthouse steps. Two factions approach him. One who looks upon him with wonder and admiration, who supported him during his battle against the government's control, their rights and liberties. And the other who stares at him with disdain, knowing that this was the man who defied his own government's wishes. He's a soldier, for crying out loud. As he approaches the courthouse steps, his entourage in front of him, a red bead comes on the lead soldier. Heroically, the soldier steps in front of the sniper shot. Three shots are fired. The crowd goes into a frenzy. But there, lying on the courthouse steps, was the soldier who took the bullet for his own for his own country, for those who would take it from him. Captain America, Steve Rogers is dead. <laughs> yes, that's a dramatization from Marvel Civil War in 2007. But it was notable for certain reasons. This wasn't only a man in his persona. He wasn't just merely another superhero. He carried the flag on his chest and on his banner. What makes him notable is his humanity, his history, and his persona. Captain America was born in about 1940 by a Timely Comics, a precursor to Marvel. They were a struggling company, and they decided that they were going to come up with a hero for the World War II efforts. Captain America Comics was an immediate hit. As you can see, he is slapping Hitler right on the jaw. <laughs> and how it came about, how did the soldier just get right up to Hitler and do that? The story goes that Steve Rogers was just a strapping young man who was patriotic, but he was rather scrawny. He was a 4F by Army standards. However, his patriotism overcome, overwent the Army recruiter's sensibilities, and he said, Did you know what? There's an Operation Rebirth Project headed by this Dr. Abraham Erskine. And it's extremely dangerous, but if you would undergo this process, you, you might be able to make it into the war. So, this young Steve Rogers went up to the brilliant physiologist, <coughs> Dr. Abraham Ernstein, and he was the first test subject. He was infused with the super soldier serum and, and irradiated with vita rays. Now, while that sounds cheesy enough, it actually worked and made him into the peak of human fitness. However, a Nazi plant just happened to be on base, and he shot the doctor, thus killing the formula and the doctor, and Rogers was haunted with the realization that he was the only success of the project. He was quickly deployed to the US Army, by the US Army to Europe, along with a 60-year-old young boy named Bucky Barnes, who was also a very young fighter. His father was career military, but he showed his stripes and did very well. And they were part of the group, the Invaders, along with Namor and two human torches. However, during one final mission with the Nazi scientist Baron Zemo, who wore a purple hood, he had stolen an experimental spy drone plane and wired it with a bomb. Rogers could not let this escape. So he and his heroic sidekick Bucky decided that they were going to chase the plane. Bucky got caught on the outside, the plane took off, the plane exploded, and Rogers, in pursuit, was shot down. Both of them were lost to the world. Twenty years pass and a new race of heroes arise. The original Avengers, who had just been set up for a couple months, just happen to be going in a submarine, and they find Rogers being stuck in an iceberg. They unmelt him, and the super soldier serum had completely preserved him, and keeping his youth and his vigor. Soon, although Rogers had to put up with being nearly 20 years gone in the universe, he soon proved his worth and became one of the founding members of the Avengers, saving them from an extraterrestrial plot with a minor character and becoming a founding member of the Avengers. And throughout the years, he has been iconic as the statistician of the Avenging group. As explained in Spider-Man 5 and Spider-Man Civil War, he says there are three elements that go into any military engagement. First, you have to know the things that you do know. Second, you have to know the things which you do not know. Third, that's the tricky part. For there are things that you don't know that you don't know. And those will get you killed. And 
his country sometimes turned against him and left the sensibilities that he had risen from in the World War II. He had had fallouts multiple times with the government, at one time becoming nomad, the man of no country, thus not under the jurisdiction of the government and not having to be driven with the stripes and stars and stripes of his country. Another time he just became the captain when a young challenger decided that Captain America was an elected position and he decided he wanted to be that. So Steve Rogers honored his wishes and left him to that. However, the conflict really comes to a head during the Marvel Civil War, shortly after which he died. The problem was that the government thought that these superheroes were being rather irresponsible with all of the abilities that they were given. So they decided they were going to have a nationwide da database with all the heroes, all the villains, everybody would be accountable. Steve Rogers had a problem with this. For the superheroes do not wear the masks, merely out of shame, but out of consideration for their families. For those masks, their families would be targeted by the villains which they are put away. However, Steve Rogers' good friend Tony Stark, otherwise known as Iron Man, supported the act on the condition that with all this irresponsibility of these masked vigilantes getting these awesome powers and decide that they're just going to take on the world, they were untrained and would most likely cause a lot of damage to themselves, their families, and their communities. The conflict of freedom to privacy and responsibility to knowing what to do with what you have caused a schism in the superhero community and started the Marvel Civil War. Roger's side of the Anti-Registration Act was coming to victory when Rogers happened to see ordinary people, firefighters, law enforcement officials, fighting for the registration side. This crippled his spirit, knowing that he thought he was working for the people, but the people in themselves had turned against him. He couldn't deal with that, so he surrendered the war, and as you can see from the beginning, it led to his death. But even though Captain Merrick was shot by a sniper and killed, his legacy lives on. As V says in the film V for Vendetta, beneath this mask there is more than flesh. Beneath this mask there is an idea, and ideas are bulletproof. Thank you.